Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome back into the card closet. This is Eric. Thanks for joining me tonight. You know, I feel like I haven't talked to y'all for a long time. That 10-part series showing my top 100 players in my collection took a really long time. <laughs> it's been about three weeks. And um, I, I did pick up a fair number of new subscribers through that process. So there are some of you who have never heard my voice before, probably, unless you've gone back and looked at my older videos. I think I've got 232 previous episodes to this. So yeah, if you didn't see that 10-part series, you can spin through them pretty quick. There's about roughly 10 to 12 cards per episode. And it's the length of one song, basically, per episode. Tried to keep it to that. It was, a, it was a lot of fun to do. You know, you probably noticed that the technology involved wasn't that great. My PC is about 10 years old. You know, who buys a new PC anymore? And uh, just kind of went with the Movie Maker app that was on there. So I was fairly limited on what I could do. For graphics and animations and things like that but um, I had fun with it did what I could tried to get a variety of brands into what I showed the players of course were predetermined but I tried to get a variety of years brands um, shiny vintage tried to mix it all up as best I could um, and had a good time with it I would like to do something like that again. I don't know what in the world I could count down next, but it was kind of fun making those. So hope you enjoyed them. And uh, I know a lot of you commented, and I'm curious if anybody guessed any of the top ten correctly. I thought about doing a contest after number episode part nine and uh, seeing who could get the top ten right, but uh, decided not to. One thing I did learn, though, through the process is that um, I there was a stretch of years there from about 2004 through 2010 that I didn't have a lot of cards to show, and that's because they're all in these boxes right in front of you right now. These are my unopened factory complete sets for tops, 2004 through 2010, and... These were the years where Tops made specific factory boxes with teams on them. So those are the years I picked up the Boston Red Sox designed boxes. I don't know if they made them for every team in the league or just the good teams. <laughs> but anyway, the Red Sox had boxes all those years. And for some reason, I just decided, you know what? I'm not going to open them because of the Red Sox. I'm going to keep them factory sealed. And so there they are. But when it came to doing that video, unless I had doubles, I didn't have any cards to show from those years. And that kind of, especially with some of the players um, that were very active and in their prime during those years, it kind of limited what I could, what choices I had to show for samples of those players. So what I learned is that I'm going to open these. Uh, it's not... It's not fun to enjoy cards that you've never seen. In fact, when I was looking through galleries of cards of each of my players to kind of pick out my favorite design of each player, I had to pick two cards to show for each player in the top 100. Some of them were kind of tough to pick down to two. And so I, I decided that it wasn't any fun when I was going through those galleries to see cards that were really, really cool from these sets that are in front of you and to know I couldn't show them. In fact, what was really sad in a way, I saw cards in there of great players that I had never seen before. Cards I own, they're in the box, but I've never taken them out, never looked at them, never enjoyed them. So in coming episodes, I am going to crack these factory sets open and kind of thumb through them with you. I'll do it, you know, on camera. 
and then I'll get pages and I'll get binders and I'll add them to the rest of the binder, the rest of the binders on the shelves. So that's one thing I learned through that. All right, seems like since it's been a long time that I'm a little bit behind, and I've gotten some cool stuff in. I'm going to readjust the camera here. But I've gotten some cool stuff in the last three weeks. Uh, let's start out with this one. And this one, if you watch Walkenbach, you saw this card on his. It was a contest he had. I was the winner. I got to submit one card for grading to Jim Mint Grading. And he showed this in his reveal a couple weeks ago before he sent it on to me. He'd asked if he could do that, and I said, of course. So here it is. It got a 9.5 Gem Mint Grading. The thing I like about Gem Mint Grading, besides the fact that they match the colors of the flip to the colors in the card, is that you could put custom wording there. So I put the card closet collection. I always think it's neat when you when you're on eBay and you see cards that came from some well-known collection and they'll like if you're a really really well-known collector who who died usually they'll put you they'll put that on the flip PSA SGC whatever they'll put on there you know this is so this comes from the so and so collection you know somebody who collected tons and tons of old cards and that were that were in great condition so it's kind of a sign that you've well, it's first of all, it's a sign that you died. The second sign is that you made it as a collector to have that done. So I thought that was kind of cool to be able to put my name on the back of those. Got a lot of different things in here. Here's something you probably never thought you'd see on my channel. And that is hockey cards. So here's the story as I thumb through these. There was a gentleman on the trading card database who needed about four or five of my hockey card traders from 1972-73 to complete his set. He had nothing in his trade list that I needed. So he sent me a message and he said, hey, I really need these cards. Nobody else on Trading Card Database has these particular ones in the condition that you do. Could you look through my trade list and find something that you'd take in return for these five? Well, all he's got, he's just a hockey collector, so, and I don't really collect hockey. So I thought, okay, I want this guy to get the cards. I went through his list, and I picked, if I had to say who my favorite players were in hockey, I'd say Wayne Gretzky and Mike Madano. So I went through and I picked all his Mike Madonos that he had for trade and all his Wayne Gretzky's that he had for trade. And I said, let's, I want this for a deal. And he said, done. So even though I don't technically collect these, I ended up picking up some, you know, they're just common cards, some Madonna rookies. I'm a Madonna fan just because he started his career in Minneapolis, which is the local team here. I remember him playing in the Stanley Cup Finals in the early 90s. Kind of thought these Opeaches were cool. So anyway, yes indeed, picked up some hockey. Picked up some baseball too. Um, picked up a 1969 Tony Oliva Sporting News All-Star. Traded for the entire complete team set of uh, Red Sox in the Tops Pro Debut set. So uh, we've got Blaze Jordan, Brian Mata, Tristan Cassis, Brandon Howlett. Nick York, and finally, J. 
gentleman who did get some got some major league time this year, I believe, Jaron Duran. So that's the entire team set just in one fell swoop there that I traded for. Also picked up a silver prism of Alex Verdugo. He's not in the finest refractor set for the Red Sox in 2021, so I wanted to get a shiny card of his and went with the silver prism route. Basketball cards. <clears throat> Montrell Harrell of the Lakers is not in any of the other shiny refractive sets. So went with the Donner's Optic Hollow. Also, LeBron James cards are coming down in price. Pick this... Donruss Optic Hollow out of LeBron James. Shout out to Topps Vintage 316. A couple more LeBrons from the Revolution. This year's Revolution. I didn't have the Astro parallel yet. And as you can see, the Astro's got those stars in the background. And then I also... Didn't have the fractal parallel either of LeBron. So kind of see that fractal gear looking circular pattern back in the background there. Love these revolutions, as you know. Here's a card I picked up that's the wrong card. Uh, this is the 2018-19 Silver Prism of LeBron. And I actually bought the Donruss Optic Hollow of this year. And the eBay guy sent me the wrong card. So um, I let him know I got the wrong card. He said he will ship the other one to me and then I will ship this one back. So for a few more days anyway, I have this card, <laughs> but not for long. Sending that back. And then probably uh, the oldest card that I picked up recently is a 1937 Opeachy of Wes Farrell. I've showed these before. These are the ones that collectors at the time could punch out the, the player's profile and have it stand up. This one does not look like it's actually ever been punched. But it is a two because of the soiling and spotting that it has on it. But 1937 is significant because it's the, it's the last year of which I don't have the complete Red Sox team set. So 1938 to present, I have the complete Red Sox team sets. So now I'm on 1937, and I think I've got one more to go. And I picked the Opeachy from 1937 to be the set. Uh, there are other options too, like there's a, a really rare Gaudi issue that year. And I think there's some, some exhibits that kind of span through that year as well. But I picked Opeachy, even though it's a little more expensive, just because I like it better. And there are plenty of players to choose from in that issue. And then, remember this guy? This is my Com C Order Burndown chart. So I've been plotting this every day since I showed it weeks ago. And uh, the red line, once again, is the number of cards in front of me in line to be shipped. The blue line is the number of cards, if they were to ship cards at an even pace, that's the number of cards that, that would be shipped per day, that there would be left to ship um, if they were working at a steady pace. The start date is the day I asked for shipment. The end date at the end is the date they said that they would, that they expected them to deliver, and it chopped off a little bit. This line actually goes down to zero on December 29th. But, you know, here today we are, November 2nd, 2021, and there are just over 200,000 cards ahead of me in line, and it started off just under 800,000 cards to ship before mine. So if you draw the pencil line in there like I did, at the rate they're going, November 18 looks to be the date that they would ship them, 
in currently on their website, the estimated ship date that they've got listed there for me is November 12. So not too far off from what the uh, chart shows. So there you go. I think I'm all caught up now. It's good to feels good to be talking to you all again. Thanks for sticking with me through that video series. Hope you like those cards. Hope you like the music. I didn't get any uh, copyright dings. I, I got a copy, couple uh, copyright claims that said I could use the song, uh, but they might have to put commercials in, or they reserve the right to put commercials in. So maybe some of you saw ads when you watched those videos. I'm not sure. Hope not. But anyway, yeah, I like doing that. But I also like being back, talking to you all again my friends in the hobby. And again, welcome to all you new people. Hope you stick around here in the card closet. And that shall do it for tonight. I'm checking out now. Next time, the next episode, I'm going to be talking about this card. Sneak peek here. Well, how can I do this? All right, that's your hint. You know what that is? We'll talk about it next time. Take care, everybody. Bye.